Guys, I want you to all imagine I've got in my right hand here a magic pill. Now this magic pill, if you took it, increased automatically your bone density. It automatically increased the strength and integrity of all your joints, all your muscles, your ligaments. And it autom automatically decreased your blood pressure and lipid levels if you were high. Folks, this magic pill decreased stress, anxiety, depression, you know, increased productivity at work. Who'd be interested, folks, if I, if I said a pill did that? Now, what if I said this pill had absolutely no side effects, so your hair didn't fall out the next day, and you didn't fart every 50 minutes? Who, who'd be interested in taking it now? What if I said it was absolutely free? Who's, who'd be interested in taking it now? Folks, if the person next to you hasn't got their hand up, please check for a pill for me. Okay. Folks, I'm really excited to talk to you today about the benefits of health and exercise. And um, I spent so long studying it, and, and it's super, been a passion of mine to speak as well. And, and to have this many people to speak in front of is an absolute privilege. Um, we're going to empower you in the next time to try to empower you in the next 20 to 25 minutes uh, on certain topics in health and exercise. And I thought we might start with one of the major, major, major topics in, in health and exercise that when you read any magazine, you read any look at any videos or watch any shows, it's a major topic. It starts with F and it's, and it's three words. Does anyone want to have a stab? It's three letters, sorry. Fat. Fat, so I'll just grab it. Okay, so I want you all to imagine that hypothetically we, we took a guy off the street. Now this guy was, say, 45 years old and um, he had given me permission, should he have a heart attack and die, to do an autopsy and have a look at, look at what's inside. Now, hypothetically speaking here, guys, okay? Um, I'm going to show you a slide of what it would look like if I were to take that autopsy. Now, I'm just going to warn people in the audience that if anyone gets a little bit queasy or if anyone gets a little bit grossed out by anatomical type pictures, if you can either just close your eyes or look away for the next two minutes and I, and I will let you know when, I, when I'm done, okay? What do you want to talk about today? It's not the purpose of today's presentation. Okay, so let's take, let's imagine this guy had, had had a heart attack and I had permission to take a look at what's inside. Here's what we'd see. Right, nasty stuff. Now let me just get my photo out here. Okay guys, just look at me for a sec. Now if I were, this photo is a longitudinal photo. So what it is, is a slice straight down here and a photo from the side. Now this gentleman was obviously a little bit overweight and as you can see here, we've got the abdominal muscles, and they did a very good job of slicing him up. They've cut him through, that was six minutes. We've got the skin. Okay, underneath we've got a big layer of fat. Disgusting. What does that remind you of, folks? Does it any food? Does that remind you of any food? You know, cheese? You know, ice cream? Steak? No? No, don't, don't look at the red stuff, look at the yellow stuff. <laughs> okay, I'm focusing on the yellow stuff. I'm not giving you an anatomy talk, I'm talking about fat here. Um, ice cream, fried chips, all that sort of stuff. That's what it turns into, by the way, if, if you're curious. So, I thought I'd show that to you. For some people, it's very powerful to actually see what their food turns into before they eat their food. And if they knew that, maybe they'd think twice about eating it in the first place. Right, let's not dwell on that. Now, these are fat cells blown up. Now, you can see this. Fat cells that have been exploited or are full of currently solid fat. And then you have the smaller cells in and around the cell with the, the star in it. And these fat cells that aren't exploited, okay, so they're there to store fat if need be, but they're not actually storing fat because you have a good output and you have a good input. Okay, so for example, if you're exercising regularly, you're expending a fair bit of energy, um, you're eating, your eating is good, you won't put on a lot of fat. However, if you don't, then the fat cells tend to get fuller and poorer and poorer, and that's how people tend to put on weight. Um, so I thought I'd share that with you because every one of us has a predetermined amount of fat cells. So we can't actually, by exercising or, or, or even surgery in some instances, decrease the amount of fat cell count that we have inside of us. But unfortunately, our body does make more fat cells if we keep eating. Okay, so. It's a, I guess it's a catch-22, guys, in that um, you know you really need to moderate where you're at, and even though you have surgery, the body will tend to, to go back to its genetic uh, potential. So let's um, move on 
to some of the foods. What I want to do is use some really powerful comparisons of some of the foods you may eat to put you in that position. And I'm just going to set the foundation right, uh, before we get into those slides. Let's say that one, one pound of fat or half a kilo of fat, okay, so let's just say 0.5 of a kilo, means about 3,500 calories. Calories is the measurement of energy. Okay, how much energy can this fat put out? So one pound or half a kilo means about 3,500 uh, 3, calories. Now walking, which is the analogy we're going to use in the next couple of slides, walking is 200 calories per hour. Okay. Now I just want you to put that in the back of your minds, and just out of interest, we're going to have a look at some, some other activities. And uh, just for interest sake, so cycling, we have uh, at about 500 calories per hour, and we also have running, which is about 1,000 calories per hour. Now, I was giving this presentation a couple of weeks ago, and a gentleman shouted out to me, West, uh, what about sex? And I said, 400 calories per hour. Okay? And, and he said to me, he said to me, Wes, can you work out two minutes for me? And I said, uh, 10 calories, mate, or about one sixth of a beer. Interesting. Now, there's another type of sex, folks, and it's, it's called EMS. Has anyone heard of that? Extramarital sex? That goes for about 800 calories per hour. I'm only joking, folks, I'm just playing with you. Alright, let's move on. Now, who here, pop your hand up if you enjoy eating ice cream. Oh, don't, 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 don't look good in front of everyone. I know you eat it. Why eat it? Hands up if you like cheese. That's about 90%. What about, um, what about chips or cake? If you like any of those, do pop your hand up. Alright, the big one here. Chocolate. Everyone should be up here. Come on. Alright. Let's have a look at some of the comparisons of how much fat is inside these foods. And then I'm going to use the comparison of how long you would have to walk off that energy. Let's, let's use that. So a cheese platter, let's take for example a cheese platter, has about 60 grams of fat. If you're a male, you're going to have to walk over two hours to expend the energy that you've just eaten. Okay? 13 kilometers. If you're a female, even more. Interesting. A third of a medium block of chocolate, about 24 grams of fat. If you're a male, close to just 100 minutes. 100 minutes. Now think about that, folks. How long does it take you to eat a third of a block of chocolate? I don't know. I could probably come on down in less than a minute. All right. It's going to cost you 100 minutes to expend that energy. Another interesting analogy. Now I'm going to quickly walk through these. Uh, 18 grams of fat for a slice of cake for 55 minutes of walking if you're a male, 70 if you're a female. Three scoops of full, full cream ice cream. Okay, 21 grams of fat over an hour for a male, 78 minutes for a female, and chips, large fries, KFC, McDonald's, we're looking at um, over an hour again. Okay, so when I, when I say this to people, um, they really start thinking, and they, they look at me and they say, Wes, I, I really now think before I eat. Um, if I know that if I eat this cheese platter, I'm going to have to walk two and a half hours to expend the energy I've just eaten, I'll really think twice before I eat it. Um, and I, 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 that's great because, you know, if I hammer this point home in some way, shape or form, it's going to help you in, in the long term. Now, the major thing here is that 90 to 97% of all body fat gets converted to body fat. So, if you're not having the, the exercise component of things, then you're in a bit of strife over time, okay? Because we have, we all, body fat when we're resting, but when we start eating more than we expend, and we do that over a week, we do that over a month, and we do that over a year, and we do that over 10 years, then we find that we start to accumulate weight and we wonder why. Okay. Now, I say, if, so the, the, the model of that is everything in moderation. Okay, everything in moderation except for four things. Would you like to know what those four things are? Okay, I'm telling you. Folks, everything in moderation except four things. Would you like to hear what they are? Yes. Okay. Now, Dr. John Tickell, who's a very prominent doctor, he promotes these, these four things, and these things you can do to excess. 
Um, and thousands of studies have also proven that these things have been very, very successful in, uh, in leading a healthy lifestyle. And they are laughter. This is really quick, by the way. Now, laughter obviously is a bit like an inner workout. It okay, just gives you a really good pickup, releases lots of good energies inside the body. Sex, you can do to excess, although that's debatable in recent times. Um, vegetables. Okay, you see all the, the Chinese villagers go out there and their diet primarily is made up of rice and vegetables. You don't have that people. Go to the Western societies or you go to the, 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 the cities of those Chinese people or that country and you see fat people because of westernized food. And the last 